Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. A couple weeks ago, I was searching the internet for unique architecture, and I came across a man who's typically a boat designer and decided to build a house like he would build a boat. But as you can see, the structure behind me is not a boat, but it is a house. And it's also a replica of a lunar lander. So needless to say, today's tour is extremely unique I can't wait for you to see the inside and meet the builder. Without further ado, let's get started. I'm Kurt Hughes and this is my Lunar Lander dwelling. I began building strange things most of my life. When I was in high school, I built a telescope in an observatory. When I was 20 or 21, I built a geodesic dome up in the mountains above Wenatchee. When I was in architecture school, I started building my first boat. And so when I was wondering what it would take to build a house just like a boat, I had to dive in and start doing it. I was always curious about the shape of the lunar lander. Usually an architect can look at any form and understand what's going on. I would look at the lunar lander and I had no idea what was going on. I decided to build a lunar lander as a, a getaway vacation home, kind of like a fishing shack, but high tech. And the idea was just to have a place to go away, be contemplative. And when I started doing that, I thought, why not do it like a boat? using a modern composites and vacuum bagging and, and modern materials. It's suspended off the ground. You don't have to dig a foundation. And that both matches the lunar lander, but also it's very light on the land. It's kind of cool, just when you lie in the bed and realize I'm several feet off the ground. It's taken me about seven years to build this on weekends. And of course, in the wintertime, you can't really build anything here. But then seven years makes it seem like I'm done. And I'm still puttering on stuff. I think one of my favorite things that happened to me when I was finishing it here was a family came up here and a little boy ran up and he said, what is it? One of the rules I realized, I didn't set out for this, was I've got to be able to look at it and go, damn, that's cool. And if I can do that, that's the kind of things I'm looking for that keep me amused. So this is my Lunar Lander dwelling. Here's the inside, come on in. And this is the main floor here. Here's Captain Nemo's window where the dining table is. The window is, uh, again, I wanted to look like Captain Nemo's window in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And this is a table from my first boat that I launched in uh, 1979 and decided to repurpose it here. Yeah, these are actually the old buttons on the sailboat. And the button turns on the overhead light. And then there's the plywood epoxy seats that I wanted to make look slightly aerospace. And there's the, the weather center. And this is the bathroom here. This is built like a boat also. So everything's rounded and epoxied and because of that, it can get wet and it won't distort or get soggy or anything. This is this light here, and then that's for a uh, cove light underneath. And then inside here, the bathroom, there's a Japanese toilet that the tank is intended to be installed in the wall, and I thought it looked so technical, and look, the tank is only a few inches thick. There's a shower in there, and that's particularly fun because you can look out the window and see the river. There's an opening boat window. And the floor is all epoxy, and it has glow powder in it so that during the day it's absorbing sunlight or just light. And at night when you walk up here, no lights are on, the whole floor is glowing like the Milky Way. 
So you built everything in here, the doors, the seats? Yeah, although the metal work I don't do. So my brother did the dome. See, he welded that together. Yeah, I really want to sit here and look up and see the stars at night. Here's one of the doors, and unlike most doors, it's made of a piece of the wall, so it has the same insulation value as the wall, which is about five times better insulation than a regular door. And that allowed me to do the airplane aerospace recessed handle like that. Yeah, and then this is kind of fun, it's a thumbprint. There, now I recognize it. <laughs> you had a lot of fun with this, didn't you? I had too much fun with it. Kitchen Galia has a carbon fiber uh, countertop. It's electrical kitchen. Everything's wired for a 110 or 220 where it's needed. And then the sink, pretty standard, except it also has colors indicating the temperature of the water. The water heater is electric, and it's an on-demand water heater, so that if I'm gone for a week or two weeks or a month, it's not running up an electric bill. And the place has uh, really good electric bills. In the middle of winter, it's been about 25 a month with the temperature staying at 60 degrees. This is actually a Lunar Lander thing, if you look at any of the pictures of it. Those two triangle windows are one of the signatures, and then the others are just kind of nautical looking, but I wanted to be able to see the river from here with everything. Extremely high quality plywood supporting a cantilever out there. And that's another sit panel for the floor. And it's a great place to sit after sunset, and just look at the river. So it's really a, a nice place. Okay, so that's a cantilevered ship's ladder, and it doesn't touch the floor. And originally, my floor was on, only going to be five feet down or something like that, and it was just going to be like a lounging pit. But the building department said, no, you can't do that, you need seven feet. So I extended the cantilever, and it's the longest ship's ladder I've ever seen. It's uh, two feet smaller on each side than what's up there. And besides the bed, they're basically closets, I call them bins, where clothing or tools or things like that can be kept. Yeah, here's some uh, boat windows, and I originally bought two or three of them at about $10 total. I thought I'll just find two or three more and I'll be good. But it turned out those are the only two or three I ever found again at, at yard sales. So I bought the uh, remaining three for about $100 each. And these were um, airplane style, but I couldn't actually get any tray tables to put stuff on. It has cove lights all underneath. And these are kind of things that I learned being here that I would have never thought about when I was just laying out the plans. Steel stairs, steel legs, but the rest of it is a composite sit panels with a high-grade plywood on both sides and then the formular foam in the middle and all glued together with uh, epoxy and uh, fiberglass. One of the things that keeps me amused and also keeps me from stumbling around in the dark when I'm walking from the car is I've got glow-in-the-dark pebbles here on the walkway. And at night, they glow just enough so you can see where you're walking. And it looks kind of like a star field, too. So again, these are steel. My neighbor next door turned out he had a plasma cutter, so aren't these cute little details? I love that. It's not touching the ground. Yeah, it's suspended, and there's no foundation, which uh, blows my architect friend's minds. But that's because these on these uh, pads, it just sits on the surface of the earth, and you can adjust the turnbuckles to level it. And so it could be really on any kind of terrain or even changing terrain, or even floats. It could be on the water with a float under each one. It's about 2,500 pounds, which is a fifth to a tenth of what typical tiny houses weigh. This is the lower level hold down before the upper level was built. And then I have the upper level hold downs, which really do the heavy lifting. And the winds often, well not often, but occasionally get over 100 miles an hour here and at least once that we have pictures of they blew uh, semi-trucks over. And so I want to make sure this all stays here. I did calculations that should do 88 miles per hour without hold downs, but uh, uh, that wasn't enough. This right here is the uh, water coming in. 
So it's very, very insulated so the cold water can come in. And this is a tool for the water shut off in case the water has to be shut off. And then this sewer line runs down here, out and into the, uh, to the fragile wetlands septic system. I started looking at, at the, the lunar lander and just 3D modeled it myself just to see how it was and then changed that around with things that could be useful. Pretty much everybody that looks at it is, is impressed. They just uh, go, wow, I never thought, never saw one of these before. My neighbor across the street looked at my drawings for the stairs and he said, how are you gonna get up there when you get old? And he looked at me and he said, oh, you're not gonna get old, are you? I will probably keep building, and strange isn't the idea, but, but interesting things that solve new problems. I'll keep on doing that. And even on this one, I keep thinking of things to do it better, different ways. A lot of times when I'm sitting in it, looking around, I will have this feeling like, they let me stay here. It's like the coolest place I've ever seen. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video and that maybe it brought you some inspiration about what can actually be done with what we call home. I'll see you in two weeks with a new video about tiny houses or travel, but in the meantime, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you get an alert when I put up a new video.